There's gas stations all over the place. This is a new expense since we got a car. I don't know, I'm, I'm like, I'm consciously deciding not to be to be excited more than stressed awesome. about the wedding. Yeah. I'm just going to be excited. What's the worst that could happen? Someone pissed at us for some reason. Yeah. And then we have each other. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, I support Luke. I just don't know how I found this person. I know zero people like Lou. I would trust him with anything. I love him so much. I want everyone in my life to come into one place and for me to say in front of them that I'm committed to this person forever. And I want to challenge our ideas around what commitment is publicly. Commitment isn't just, I'm only gonna have sex with you for the rest of our lives. I'm Sophie Lucido Johnson, and I'm 32 years old, and I'm a writer and an illustrator and a teacher, and I'm polyamorous. Or these are just these are just like I just like base coded these so that you they could if you. What I'm about to do is throw on our wedding mixtape, which is going to be the gift that we give to our guests, and uh, we're decorating them tonight. Was it about Google Calendar? I've never even used it. If I had to give you a number for how many people I'm dating, I just don't know that I could. They would be the same number as like the number of people I consider close friends, and that number is high. Kat is my girlfriend. I would say Bob is my boyfriend. There was a time in which Luke and I were dating uh, Rachel and her partner at the time. She's a person I kiss on the lips when she leaves my house. <laughs> I definitely know what's sort of problematic about the statement of like, oh, I don't want to have a hierarchical relationship structure and relationship anarchy and then like getting married. And at the same time, there are ways that marriage is really important just as an institution because of the way that laws work. You know, mononormative culture, it is set up to, for you to have like a single partner. But at some point we got this idea that there was such a thing as the one and this person had to satisfy every little minutia of need, which is so unrealistic, it's just not possible. Society tells us that if you overcome um, obstacles, seek high and low, and meet the one, you'll live happily ever after. But nobody tells you how. This message is broadcast to us from stories, and TV, and radio, and theater, and literature, and poems, right? It's a great message, but it's a, it's a mythology. My mom is an incredibly loving person, and she has been unwaveringly supportive of the different ways that I have wanted to love people. But definitely sort of through college, every boy I dated, it was like, oh my God, what if you marry him? So I was always thinking of relationships in terms of like, am I gonna marry this person or not? And it was always yes. So I hoped to write a book for people who are sort of feeling stuck in terms of, I just keep looking for the one and I can't find the one. To be able to say, oh, you don't need to find the one. Find one or find five or find some people who you trust and who you like. The history of non-monogamy is um, interwoven with feminism. It's always also been, because we live in a patriarchal society, that women gain their power from men, be it their fathers and they get married, their husbands. Modern day marriage as we know it um, is actually a, a fairly new invention. Monogamy and sort of this closed relationship became a thing around the Industrial Revolution. With the involvement of the church, it became this thing where, again, very dyad focused, two people in a relationship come a little closer there are more opportunities for women to be um, self-sufficient and be in um, independent. Which means that now the, re the reason why they want to be in a relationship is love, convenience, adventure, um, not safety, security, 
um, wealth, future, big stuff. So it becomes a, 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 a negotiation and, and a discussion of something other than just the monogamous relationship. I learned that from Jill right off. Yeah. Are we gonna go now? Norman's trying to get out again. You told me pretty early, I think that you're the girl that I'm gonna marry or something like that. And I was like, all right, we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, you said it. You were like more sure at first than I was. I was sort of like, you hadn't been in a ton of long-term relationships. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, people say that a lot. It's not usually true. I think the current non-monogamy is the next phase of free love or swinging. People are feeling that they can talk about it out loud. And the more it's becoming visible in the media, the more people are hearing that it's an option, um, more people are seeking. So there's interest, visibility, and advocacy for sure. Sharon and Isaac love because that's the only kind of love there is. The Sharon and Isaac love. Lovers. We want to be vulnerable with you. Vulnerable. We want to show you and let you into ourselves and, and what happens and goes on. And we want to have the dialogue with you. We're just trying to be the most authentic lovers <sighs> that we possibly can. Yeah. So you're going to see us try. I like that. I think that we're trying our best. Yes. Love yourself first. Love yourself first. Amen. All right, so are you ready to rehearse? Yes. All right. All right. So we started our channel in 2016, at the end of 2016. For those of you who don't know, it started as more of like a girlfriend, boyfriend channel. Boyfriend, girlfriend like channel. super basic. Then um, it started transitioning into more. More like self-development and love, love and relationship. Because we not basic. Yeah. And then we got super busy. Life happened. Life happened. We moved several times. Uh -huh. um, now we're in a place that is a lot more harmonious. There's more alignment, I believe. Yes, keyword for this video. Alignment. Yeah. Today's keyword is alignment. Yeah. Cool, I think that was good. Isaac and I have been in a relationship for about two years now, and to anyone in the outside world, he would be my boyfriend. We don't use that word, we say partner, um, so. He's my partner. I also have another partner, Kayla. Isaac and I met Kayla together. We actually like sought her out. Um, we were like on different dating sites because we wanted to have um, different energy. We wanted to explore polyamory a little bit more. Both Sharon and Kayla, they're my girlfriends and we both have, it's equal opportunity. It's, it's balance, it's a good scale. <laughs> Do you want boiled onions? Okay. Oh, and pictures too. Isaac doesn't like to be in the middle Too, is with me and Sharon have it's new for the both of us you haven't really been with girls before and like you still have like this idea of like 
um, being with a man in a relationship and like that's more of a relationship for you. Well, not even that. It's well, it was like in the beginning. I feel like that was like something that kind of slowed us down. My relationship with Kayla is still like developing. I honestly don't even really know yet because it's not platonic because it's not like I, I'm, we're sexually attracted to each other, like we're intimate, but I don't get butterflies. Like the whole like romanticism of it is not there. And I'm still like in that space where I'm exploring it. I love and accept myself where I am right now. I am wonderful. All of life is change. My growth patterns are ever new. I can speak for myself. I express myself freely. I am creative. I speak with love. I love and accept myself. I approve of 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 myself. I think there are many reasons why people choose polyamory. I definitely have seen it in my practice as a um, is, is almost like a hack for a um, attachment struggle. For some people, they report that it's like an orientation. Like it's very much how they are wired. I think the most important thing is to find out why you're choosing it. When I started dating Eli, I like started keeping boxes with for the relationships I was in. Okay, wow. Well, I haven't been in this box in a long time, but what do we have? This is a set of um, letterpress images. This says, Sophie. Oh, you open it and it says, I love you. There's a love letter. I don't, I love Luke as much as, more than, in a different way than, with all of my heart, uh, versus Sam. Like, I love Luke so much. And the relationship just isn't my skeleton. It felt like my skeleton was removed and I was just like a jiggly, jiggly, jelloey pile when Sam left me. Everything I had like considered, I had considered like around one person and I hadn't thought about what would happen if they weren't there. And I thought like, that's not how it should be. I've, this has happened to me before. Like what, you're supposed to be totally debilitated for months because someone doesn't want to sleep with you anymore? Like that's not, functional and so I just started to approach relationships a little bit differently where every time I thought about the relationship I'd ask myself if this ended tomorrow how would I be doing and if the answer was I'd be fine I would like maybe be sad but I would like get over it then okay the relationship was like doing what it was supposed to be doing It's actually really funny when I first met Isaac. I didn't know he was in a relationship. I don't even remember what he said, but when I just, he's in a relationship, I was like, oh. So I was like, ah. Oh. Then he was like, but it's an open relationship. And like, so a part of me was like a little bit disappointed, but also I was just in this place where I didn't care. I was just like, I didn't have anything really going for me. I did not have a love life. I'm like, this is better than nothing. So let me just see where this goes. And I like how it sounds, the idea of love. So let me just go with it. But being in a polyamory, the polyamorous relationship is going to challenge you. Each video is like me in a different hairstyle. I don't want to do an update because we ain't that famous yet. <laughs> um, it's been seven months since we like posted our last video which i think like i think just in the overall arching dialogue it's fine because literally that last video was love equals discipline and what we had talked about like when we decided that we were going to if we were going to move in together to the next place that 
you would have to fall in line with the things that we articulated. You're feeling sad? Mm -hmm. You're feeling sad? No, I'm just, it's just kind of everything. It's like, it's so feeling the way that you feel right now, what is that doing for you? Remember we talked about this morning? I mean, what do I do? Just let it go? No, it's... Because it's, it's important, I think. What? What I'm feeling. No, of it's course it's... Of yeah, of course it is, but how does that help you grow? How does it help me grow? How does it... It's engaging with those emotions, which holds us What do I do right now? Is it a bad thing that you're feeling? Um, I am scared. Is it unresolved tension, or is it something that's to happen that is different? I just, I just keep thinking like everything is my fault, and I don't feel like you've taken. Like, I just, it's like I, I'm scared. I don't know. Like there's just okay. been so many arguments and so much like negativity and. So has it been neg? So yes. this is what I'm saying, Sharon. Has it been negativity? So this is where we talked about this a lot. Like all has the arguments at Kayla's. Yeah, like, Sharon. I know. The books that you're reading, what's the first thing that says? Has your thoughts, has the way that you operated in your life been something that has helped you grow, or has it been something that has limited you to your full potential? That's not what I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about, so, about you being more understanding to where I am or things that you could have been more so, so let me finish so mm -hmm. things that you could have been more that you could have done differently like what you just said earlier things like that because it's and not so, just me and so Sharon and remember what I told you so you're arguing with me rather than seeing I'm trying to point something out to you that you're not aware of you're trying to tell me something because I have in our relationship I have said to I'm you I'm expressing a need that I, I have that needs I, to be addressed so Sharon, for me to feel Sharon, Good. We don't realize that relationships, regardless of what they look like, monogamy, non-monogamy, they need work. They're active work. We need to understand how we love and how we show and receive love. These are really important aspects of a relationship that we all across the board need to get better at. Years ago, I had this theory that I shared with everyone about how all relationships needed a balloon and a post. Do you know that one? Luke, you are both stronger and crazier than anyone I've ever known. You held me together and caught me by surprise more times than I could count. You, I know that I'm probably the person who will challenge me and support me and be supported by me with equal enthusiasm. Congratulations to the state of Louisiana. I now pronounce you married. I think that we are on like the frontier of this and we do have things to share. Finish the one that you started. I hope for people to see like the realness of it and like that relationships are not what you see in the movies. Like they can be beautiful like that, but they also can be like dark and they can be, you know, confusing and scary. And sometimes you fight, sometimes you yell at each other. Like, it, it happens, but like 
to keep choosing each other over and over and working on it, like that is what makes the difference. I think love is about wanting other people to be happy and wanting the best for them because there are people I love my whole life and it hasn't been hard. It's hard for your expectations around someone to stay the same for your whole life. We grip so tightly to these ideas about what love is supposed to be. And I do think there's a lot of people in the world who are loving differently. And sometimes it just takes the presence of a narrative to make you understand that you're not alone. I'm working on that. <laughs> and... Oh, actually, like, I wanted, like, uh, because I know that we're um, not really seeing Kayla anymore, um, but, like, maybe, like... Yeah, um, so I definitely want to have, like, a, a talk with Kayla, like, even for myself, just, like, take more time to just process it, um, because I want to make sure that we're all on the same page, or at least we try to be on the same page about everything, because um, I do care about her, and I want her to know... Isaac and I have moved from Brooklyn to the city on the Upper East Side, so it's really close to my job. Um, we're in a lot better, like we're in a much better place right now. Instead of doing videos, you just wanted to talk about So right now, it's about me and Isaac, um, and also about my relationship with myself. I'm not too interested in having a romantic partner besides Isaac right now, or a sexual partner besides Isaac right now. Between Kayla, Isaac, and I, things are pretty much open-ended on whether or not, you know, we're, we're dating, will we continue dating or seeing each other. Um, it's kind of just like on a pause right now and we don't really know what's going to happen. <laughs> I feel a little bit relieved. Um, I know that, and I also feel sad just because Isaac and I had our own issues when Kayla came to the relationship and Kayla was resonating with my bad habits and kind of supporting them. Like me, I, I miss I, I miss having sex, but when it comes to like, I did feel uncomfortable having to like always feel guilty about doing work. That was a big thing for me. Like, it's like, oh man, like I'm doing work and is she gonna be mad that I'm trying to accomplish like my goals and stuff like that, that I, I, I feel liberated, you know. A non-traditional way of love. Is Sharon the one? I believe that Sharon is my partner. The one, I don't necessarily think there is a one. I think that we have a very deep dynamic and we gain a lot from each other. And we're gonna explore a lot together with each other and other people. This idea of the one, like is Isaac the one for me? My answer is yeah, he is the one for me. But at the same time, it's not limited to just that one person and all those feelings of jealousy and like, and like hiding that you have to do. It's just, it's open. And so in that sense, it's even better than the idea of just that one because you're free to explore whatever it is that you want. <laughs>